Okay, so real talk, there are so many graphs like this on the USMLE. So let's break down the highest yield one you need to know for cardiac physiology. So whenever you have a graph, the first thing you want to do is define the axes. However, this image is super complicated, so I'm just going to make it more simple. So before we get into the specifics, why does this curve even exist? Well, it shows you the relationship between cardiac output and venous return, which is how much blood is coming back to the heart. So with that in mind, let's go ahead now and define the axes. So the x-axis is going to be central venous pressure. This is essentially how much blood is in the SVC and the IVC. If there is going to be congestion, you're going to have a high central venous pressure. Whereas let's say on the USMLE, you have a vignette in which a patient has tachycardia and hypotension after a gunshot wound, your SVC and IVC are going to be very empty. There's going to be less central venous pressures. So the USMLE loves for you to know what is going to shift this curve to the left and right. And that is going to be any change in blood volume. If you are going to have a patient that is going to have hemorrhagic shock, you're going to shift the curve to the left. If you are going to have a patient that gets a fluid bolus, you're going to shift the curve to the right. So here is normal and you're shifting the curve to the right. That means that you got a blood transfusion or a fluid bolus. You are going to have more preload, more venous return. Now the y-axis is going to represent cardiac output. So if you're going to have an increase in contractility, you're going to shift the curve up. If you are going to have a patient with heart failure, you are going to shift the curve down. Now this point is going to be known as the equilibrium point. This is going to represent when you your venous return and cardiac output is going to be matched. Think of it as what goes in must come out. Now, the curve is going to go down or up when there is going to be a change in your total peripheral resistance. So let's say you have a decrease in your total peripheral resistance. The patient on your USMLE vignette is in septic shock, or there is a physiology question related to exercise. Remember, if there's a low total peripheral resistance, that's going to be less afterload to the myocardium. Thus, your stroke volume and cardiac output are both going to be up. Now, let's say that you have an autonomic pharmacy pharmacology question talking to you about phenylephrine. Remember that phenylephrine is going to cause you to have vasoconstriction. So that's going to shift the equilibrium point down. All right, time for a quick summary. The cardiac output and venous return curve shows us the relationship of what goes into the heart and what must come out of the heart. That's the equilibrium point. Remember what shifts the blue curve is going to be adding or subtracting something to the system, whereas what's going to shift the red curve is going to be changes in your contractility. Recall that you are going to change your equilibrium point with any changes in total peripheral resistance. Distance.